Hello and welcome to my channel. I am Bearded Dev, and today we're going to be looking at what are dirty reads in SQL Server. So, dirty reads are where one transaction reads data that has not yet been committed by another transaction. Don't worry if that doesn't make too much sense. We're going to head over to SQL Server Management Studio now and I'll show you an example of Dirty Read. Okay, so we're in SQL Server Management Studio. I'm going to be using the AdventureWorks database for this example. I've got the latest version, I believe, which is 2019. But don't worry if you have got an older version, you should still be able to follow along. It's not the data that's important, as you will see. So I'm just going to start off with a simple query. So I'm going to select the sales order ID and the due date from our sales order header table. And I'm just going to look at a particular sales order ID uh, of 75123. Just execute that and um, we can see here we've got uh, our sales order ID and our due date returns which is just showing the the 12th of July 2014 uh, that shows to me because I have dates in UK format right so we're going to have a look at how dirty reads work now what I'm going to do is in a, another query window I'm going to run an update statement. But first of all, I need to open an explicit transaction. To do that, I'm going to begin tran. I'm going to update sales.sales order header. And I'm going to set the due date to the 1st of the 1st, 2021 where our sales order ID equals the one we showed in our previous example 75123 and I'm just going to leave a rollback transaction there. So we're going to have a look at how dirty reads come about and really there, there are two ways. So typically our transaction isolation level set in SQL Server, well the default is read committed which would protect us against dirty reads. What we need to understand is if we have a, a high concurrency such as many users are being blocked and we'll go through an example of how that can come about now. So I'm just going to start this, this transaction. So I'm opening a transaction and I'm running an update. Now, I haven't committed that transaction now, so it's still in an open state. Now, if I try and run this select now at the moment, now if I try and run this transaction again at the moment, I will effectively be blocked at this point. I am waiting for that other transaction to free up the locks on the resource that I want to read. So you can get a lot of blocking issues and one of the options you may consider is lowering that transaction isolation level to read uncommitted. So we're going to just stop this transaction for now and we're going to add a connection statement here and we're going to change the transaction isolation level to read uncommitted. So we're just going to set transaction isolation level read uncommitted and once I run that that will be in place for the connection so any other queries I run here unless I change that will be under that read committed transaction isolation level so if I go ahead and execute this query now we can see we can now read data so I'm not blocked because what read uncommitted doesn't do is it's not a trying to acquire a shared lock on that resource. The other transaction has got an exclusive lock on it because it's actually updating that resource. So read uncommitted is completely ignoring that. Now where the dirty reads come in is because that transaction is uncommitted, we can go back to that transaction 
and actually run the rollback. So I'll just uncomment this now. Roll back that transaction and I'll run this query again. And now we can see we're back to the same date. So we haven't run multiple updates there. We haven't updated it to one value and then updated it back. We've simply opened a transaction, locked that resource. The only way we could read that resource was to lower the transaction isolation level. And in doing so, we introduced the capability of dirty reads. Now, that transaction could perform multiple operations, and some of them could fail. And typically what we'd do is add logic to roll that back. And if for any reason that transaction actually rolled back, as we've demonstrated here, we've effectively read data that doesn't exist. Now, if you take this example and put it into the real world, what could be happening in between those periods is you could be generating critical financial reports, you could be updating customers' bank balances, you could be updating stock, you could be processing orders, and that could introduce a whole world of problems for you. And we're going to go through another example of how you can introduce dirty reads, but this time without changing the transaction isolation level. So I have, uh, I'm just going to copy the select to a new query window here. So within this connection, we're not going to change the transaction isolation level. We're going to use a query hint. So if I go back to how I started, uh, which again, we'll just open a transaction and run the update. So the update happened, but it isn't yet permanent. It's still an open transaction. So we shouldn't be able to see that data unless we're looking at transactions that are in a read uncommitted state. So we'll go ahead and re again run our select and at this point we are blocked again. We're, we're waiting for that resource to free up the lock. So as soon as that transaction commits or rolls back this query will run because we're running under read committed. But if I stop that and add a query hint to the table, so we're just going to open parentheses and write the word no lock. And what we're actually telling SQL Server here is, go to this table and read data, but don't give us a read lock. So in other words, just give us, just give us what the data could be. Just give it us in a read uncommitted state. So if we go ahead and execute the query, we can see that date again and again we can go and roll back that transaction however the issue has already happened we've read that data in in that state we've created reports we've processed orders we've updated customers bank balances whatever we've done so that is the problem with dirty reads and as i mentioned the default isolation level of sql server is read committed so that, re that removes the problem of dirty reads, but what it also introduces is more blocking. So you have to find that balance between high concurrency when you've got loads of users accessing the data, between how you want that data to, to be displayed. Do you want it to be in a consistent state, or do you want to allow users to read anything, even if those transactions could roll back? Really hope you have enjoyed that video. If you have, please do hit the like button. Check out the other videos on my channel and subscribe if you haven't already. And hit that notification button to be made aware of when new videos are uploaded. Thanks a lot for watching.